Hi guys, welcome back to Amy's Cooking. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I am so glad that you're able to join me today because I will be sharing with you how to make French baguette or French bread. This is a recipe of mine that I have created a few years back and we have never gone astray from this recipe. It is slightly different than other recipes that I have shown on the channel like my Vietnamese baguette and uh, bun mi recipes. So if you haven't seen those, make sure that you um, check them out. I will leave the link in the description box below. And Basically, the ingredients are going to be slightly different because if we're speaking a French baguette, authentic French baguette, then you have very basic ingredients like just the sugar, the water, the salt, the bread flour, the yeast. Um, you don't add in other ingredients like oil or butter or egg to soften up that dough. So make sure that you're watching the entire video because I will be sharing with you how to make the dough super soft, like the little tips and tricks here and there um, to be able to still make that super light and fluffy bread. But before we do so, don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I will also leave all of the measurements in this, the description box below, so make sure you check that out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I am super excited. Okay, so let's just go over some of the ingredients that we will be using today. I have salt. This is gonna be sugar. This is the brand of yeast that we will be using. This is instant yeast, so I'm adding this directly to the flour. If you're using the active yeast, just make sure that you activate it in the uh, water before you use it. Uh, we have water and then this is the bread that we're using, bread flour that we're using. Uh, note here that the protein content of this bread flour is 12.7%. I've used many different types of bread flours in the past when, it, uh, when I bake bread and it always seems to be <clears throat> that this particular brand has given me the best result. The higher protein content that you see here is going to help build more gluten formation and that's really going to be key to how the dough rise and how it holds the air inside to give you that really airy fluffy bread. Um, so if you're able to, and this is not a sponsored video, but if you're able to just make sure that you find this particular brand just because I've had really good experience with it. Let's go ahead and measure out the flour. I know in the past, my previous videos or bread recipes, I don't always add the US measurement. It's because a lot of times I don't want any variation, especially when you're using a new recipe. If you measure out using a scale, then it's going to be a lot more uh, accurate. But in this recipe that I'm sharing with you today, I will also list the US measurements. And again, it's, you know, you can find it in the description box below. So note here, this is supposed to be five grams of salt, but as you can see here, it doesn't really fill up the whole entire one teaspoon. Um, so just make sure that you kind of gauge and go a little bit less, okay? Here we're adding in eight grams of sugar. Okay, so we're gonna be adding in 10 grams of yeast. Try not to add the yeast directly on top of the salt because yeast and salt, if directly touched, don't play very well together. It can deactivate the yeast, so kind of spread it out. Again, if you're using just the active form, make sure that you mix it in with the water before you add it to the flour. Now I'm gonna mix everything together again. As you can see here, I'm mixing in the yeast first and then the salt and everything else. And from here, just combine everything before we add in the water. I'm using one cup of water. It's pretty leveled. So this should be the amount that you'll need. Keep in mind that sometimes you may need a little bit more or a little bit less depends on the environment that you're at, it depends on how old your flour is. So adjust as you need For to. the water, it's just regular room temperature water. I'm gonna mix everything together. 
For the purpose of this video, I'm mixing it in a bowl. But when you're doing it, you can just add all of these things straight to the bowl for the uh, mixer. We are using a KitchenAid mixer today to, to knead this dough. Just make sure everything is well incorporated and then I will transfer this whole thing over to the mixing bowl. I now have everything transferred over to the mixing bowl. I will be using a KitchenAid mixer and we will be mixing this for a total of 10 minutes on speed number two. And I'll leave the actual name of my KitchenAid mixer and the model uh, on the screen for you. That way, if you're using the same as mine, it will be exactly that amount of time. If you're using a different one, then I want you to pay attention to the different stages of what the dough looks like as I knead this uh, flour. So I've got the dough hook on and I'm going to start kneading this dough. As I'm going through the 10 minutes, I'm gonna stop here and there to show you what it looks like. So that was about one minute of kneading time and as you can see the amount of liquid that we added to this bread flour gives it just the right amount. Um, the dough is perfectly not too dry, not too wet. Everything is coming clean from the bowl. So right now we're three minutes into the kneading time and I wanted to show you what the dough looks like. As you can see how it just tears so easily like this. Let me pull it out and show you a closer look. So I did grease my hand with some Pam, some butter so that it doesn't get so sticky because the dough right now is still very wet and sticky. But as you can see here, you can see how rough the surface of this dough is. You see that? I'm gonna show you a comparison in just a little bit as to how smooth it gets later on as we continue to knead it. But also like if you start to like peel this apart, it doesn't really have that elasticity that we're looking for. The elasticity is really important because that is gonna what traps the air and create a very fluffy interior of the bread. And so we will go ahead and continue to knead this um, for a few more minutes and then I'll show you again in just a little while how it looks like. Okay, so here we are at the end of the 10 minutes. Look at this. So if I start to follow this, you can see how smooth this is. And that's what you want in your dough, okay? All right, see how that smooth that is? Okay, so from here we can do that little stretch test again. I'm just gonna grab a piece here at the end. See how far we can go with this. Yep, this is exactly what you want right here. Almost a little see-through sheet. Okay, now we're just gonna wrap all of this into a ball and we're gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes. You really don't need longer than that, just so the dough can relax them so that we can roll it easier. Here's another important thing. Try to make the surface, the top part of the ball, as smooth as you can because this will be the surface that we're gonna use when we start rolling into the shape of the baguette. So the smoother that you can get this area, the better and shinier your, the surface of your bread will look later when we bake it. I've also sprayed the bottom of the bowl with some Pam butter. That way when we remove the dough, it will be much easier for us to remove it. I'm also going to spray the top part of the dough as well. Again, we're trying to create that really smooth surface so that later when we bake, it will look nice, golden, and smooth and brown. All right, at this point, we'll cover it with some food wraps and then just let it rest. So 
So now that this have rested for the 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, we'll go ahead and um, flip this over. So I'll show you what we do from here. So I'm just gonna pour this out like this. That. Okay, I have flattened it out some just to get rid of some of that air pockets that's been formed. And then from here, we're just gonna use our roller pin and we are going to roll this into a flat sheet. Okay, so the purpose of rolling this out is because we want to remove as much air from here as we possibly can. A lot of times the air is what really caused these pockets to deflate. So when you go and you score the bread, it will deflate and then your bread would definitely be dense. So I'll continue to do this and I'll show you what it looks like at the end after I roll everything out. Try to make the tip here a little bit wider than the bottom part because this is where we're gonna roll the dough um, in and it's gonna be like the very outer edge. And so you want it to be a little bit more thin and you want it to be a little bit larger than the rest. It's a little hard to see because I don't have such a um, wide angle camera, but you can probably see a bit of it. So as you start to roll, grab the end like this and just using every finger, every finger you have and just keep on rolling it. I'm not too, too worried about the middle as much as the tips where my pinkies are. So, cause I want that to hold its shape and not trail behind. So just continue to roll it all the way to the top. This way you will have a very nice smooth log. And also the middle will be a little bit more round as compared to the rest of the bread. All right, so just continue to roll again all your fingers on the log and just keep on rolling it all the way until the very end. You'll see the tail ends will be a little bit pointier and then the middle will be a little bit larger in size and this will help give you that really nice shape. All right, so I've got my baguette tray here. So this is um, what I use to make the Vietnamese baguette. I'm going to use the same tray. It is not as big as I like for a French baguette, but it comes out to a reasonable size. This will be good enough for sure for a family of four or five. Okay, so you see these little air pockets right here? You make sure you get rid of that. That's it, one nice long log. If you find that at the end, it's a little bit larger than your tray, you can just snip the end off so that way it doesn't fall over and cause your bread to deflate later when you um, score it. All right, so from here, I'm going to let this rise. You can see the height of it is probably going to be about one and a half times or double. Um, and then that will be when it's ready for us to uh, bake it. This dough has rest for about 30 minutes so far, and it has a really nice rise to it. It feels really soft, but still firm. And at this point, we can go ahead and turn on the oven. Want to bake this at 450 degrees for about 23 minutes. Now, it's important that ev that you know, you watch the bread because every oven will run a little different. Mine tends to be cooler, so I'm doing 450. Um, but just kind of take a look now and then see how it, uh, how fast it cooks and then you can adjust it. Okay, so another key thing is that we have to have water, steam actually, when we are baking French bread. It's the steam that will give that really crispy outer skin. So here I have a tray filled with about, I would say half an inch of water. And when we're preheating the oven, we're gonna add this tray in there so it can also uh, get it going 
to create that steam environment before we put in the bread. Now make sure that you preheat the oven because it needs to be hot and it needs to be steamy for this to work. All right, so this is the setup here. The tray on the very bottom and then the rack. So on like the second or the third, I've got it on like the third one right now, which is perfect for my particular oven. Now, when this starts to bake, we're gonna bake it along with the bread, but just make sure that um, the 23 minutes that we bake, when you have 10 minutes left of baking time, that you go ahead and remove this tray. Um, so that the bread has a chance to brown and get golden. If you don't remove this tray, it's gonna continue to provide that moist environment and it's not going to be able to fully cook your bread or give you that really nice golden color on the, the outer shell um, on the outside of the bread, okay? All right. So the oven is ready to go. I am checking on the bread one more time. This is what it looks like at this point. A couple of things before we bake this bread. One, we're gonna need a little spray bottle so that we can spray the bread. Okay, I'm gonna give it just some nice spray here. This will help get that crusty, really crispy layer on top. And you'll also need a razor blade or a um, the uh, professional. Um, French bread cutter which I don't have so I'm using a razor blade today and when we're scoring the bread just make sure that you're light but you're quick and you also want to go deep enough that it will create a very nice opening when it starts to bake but just make sure you're not taking your time when you go in to score it because it's really important that you want to make that really nice uh, definitive cut okay all right here we go you start on one side Cut real quick, move down some, here we go. Continue to do that all the way down. And there we go. Now we're all ready to place this in the oven and bake it. All right guys, here we are with our final product. Oh my, look at this. I'm gonna move the camera in close so you guys can hear that crackling sound. So you can always tell when bread is good when you hear that sound. It's gonna be super crispy on the outside. All right, so I am back. Um, yeah, here we are. Let me see if I can do like maybe like a close up of what it looks like. Oh my God, it looks incredible. The moment of truth, uh, let me cut this into a couple of slides and we'll do a taste test together, okay? Oh, it's still really, really hot. Okay, so let's see here. I'll move this closer. Can you see that steam? Listen to the sound. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it is so crispy, so yummy. This other side is still so hot. Oh, I'm so excited. Let me go ahead and cut up another piece and then we're gonna try it together. Oh, look at that. Can you see? See, it still has like all of those different rings in there that when we uh, rolled it up, Look at this. Look how soft that is. It 
even like the bottom of it is so nicely brown. So you can put some butter on here. Um, and yeah, this is how you make amazing, light, and fluffy French baguette. So crispy, I'm telling you guys, it is so, 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 so crispy. You have to give this recipe a try. And if you do try this recipe, make sure that you let me know how it turns out for you in the comment. Um, look at all these little cracks on the surface of the bread. So good. I promise you are not going to have to look for another French bread recipe after this. All right, guys, that's it. Okay. Mm. I'm just kind of so crunchy and light all at the same time. Mm. I don't want to talk with food in my mouth. I'm sorry. Let me take one more bite. Absolutely incredible, fantastic. I have so many crumbs and everything on my mouth probably. Let me tell you, there is just such a well-balanced amount of, um, of sweetness and also saltiness inside this baguette. You guys, trust me on this. Give this a try. Mm. I'm going to go and just eat the rest of this and I'll see you guys next time. Okay. All right. Have fun baking. Bye.